Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to have a look at the LM338K versus the regular old LM317K with pass transistors. We're going to see what's the differences between them, if there's any at all, because this part is a, almost a $20 part or £20 part in the UK. You can, you can't, there are many, many companies don't make these anymore. There's only a few that do, and the ones that do charge arm and a leg for it. And we're going to go look through the scope to see their performances. We're going to load them up. Hopefully we can load them up to their max and see if there's any differences in between any these two parts. And uh, what performance does the LM317 bit pass element on the output gives us. And see if that pass element, because it's outside of the LM317 itself, see if that affects its performances or uh, the LM317 can manage and regulate everything which is outside as well with it. We're going to have a look at the scope. We're going to provide, put some power into them, check them out, and then we're going to put some numbers under here, under each each part. And then at the end, we're going to just have a look and see what performs better than the other or are they similar. And, uh, you know, instead of buying this part, which is expensive, we can just have this and I will have our pass elements and uh, you know use this instead of that and save money so we're going to have the first uh, part this is LM338K it's a TO3 package so I've put it up here I've wired everything like so so everything is closed because we're going to be pulling lots of current and what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this to the limit so I'll have a bridge rectifier and a big ass transformer there where uh, the bridge rectifier at the moment I only have a thousand microfarads on the output so there's going to be lots of ripple as we stop putting current and we're going to see the performance of the part to see if we lots of ripple in the input what sort of output do we get and then we're going to change the capacitor to a proper 10,000 microfarad capacitor and see what effect does that have on the output so I'm going to connect and let's see what do we get so I'm going to connect to our load. I'm going to collect our oscilloscopes, probes, everything here. Okay, just bear with me a second. I'm going to connect everything up. And let's see what do we get. I've got around 24 volts going in. And I have the LM317s and LM338s set to around 10 volt out okay the blue trace is the output of our bridge rectifier and the yellow trace is the output of our voltage regulator okay so what i'm going to do is now i'm going to set up the voltage regulator to uh, to get some current out so what do we have here Okay, there we go. All right, so we are putting around one amp. So I'm going to move for you guys to this is oscilloscope so you can see what's going on. Hopefully it's visible. Hopefully you can see how much current we are putting as well. Okay, so one amp and you can see the output of our regulator is saying that we have around four millivolt of ripple and we have, let's get rid of this. We have around around 700 millivolts of ripple of going in, so it's performing really good. If I just make this even better, yeah, you can see that it's just telling us now we have 820 microvolt of ripple. So I assume that that ripple is just the noise on the output and the wiring, so it shouldn't affect. Let's say, let's. I'm going to take a note of what we have. So if I grab my pen, and this is the LM338, so we put in one amp, and the ripple is reporting around 821 microamps. So I'll just say one millivolt of ripple. Okay, we're gonna speed it up in here to go up. Okay, we are at around two, around two amp. Okay, so 2 amp, and we can see what's happened now. Now the ripple from the input it is, it is a lot and is passing to the output of our regulator. So the input is reporting 1.1 volt of ripple, 
and the output of our LM338 is reporting around 27 millivolt of ripple. So let's drop that down, 28 millivolt of ripple at 2 amp. Okay, let's just go up even further. You can see a lot of funny stuff is happening now. Ooh, doesn't like that at all. Okay, what we're reporting now, we got 1.6 of ripple on the input and the output is 300 and I say 20 and that's 3.2 amp. Let's even bring it further up. Okay, what do we got? We got 4 amp. Okay, 4.1 amp and we are reporting around 440 millivolt of ripple. Can we go 5 amp? Nope, we can't go 5 amp. Okay, that's that. Let's put it all the way back. And that was with 100 mic uh, 1000 microfarad capacitor. So I'm going to change. I'm going to change that now to a 10,000 microfarad cap. And let's see what difference does that make. Okay, I'm just going to quickly unsolder this. Whoop. That's unsoldered. I'm going to put a big cap. Okay, we have a 10,000 microfarad cap now. Let's connect everything up. Okay, let's connect it. Right, let's connect our negative leads and positive leads. Okay, now we got 10,000 microfarad cap, we pull in one amp, and we have nothing. Let's put that down, and let's bring that down. Okay, so we are reporting around 66 milliwatt of ripple on the input, and the output it's nothing, 400 microvolts. So let's put that down with... I was 1000 microfarad, this is 10,000 microfarad, and we are reporting at 1 amp, I say 400 microvolt. Okay, let's move a notch up. Let's go to 2 amp. We got 2 amp, and we are at 800 microvolt. Let's move to three okay let's got 3.8 amp and we have 1.2 millivolt and let's go all the way to five oh five point four amp i can see that something happening okay so let's just go to let's make five amp which is rated for and we are getting around still 1.2 Reporting, let's get better. Yep, same. 1.2 millivolt of ripple at full 5 amps. You can see here we got 5 amp of current going through, and see how the 10,000 microfarad is performing compared to the 1,000 microfarad. So the input ripple is around 330 millivolt, and the output ripple is 1.2 millivolt. Okay, so that was for LM338. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move into our LM317 with our pass element. Okay, so we're going to what we're going to do now is we're going to connect our LM317. Okay, we got our negative here. And let's quickly connect things up. Here our positive will be that here our positive will be this and our negative will be here whoa five amp we don't want five amp okay so we got one amp now and uh, let's take a note okay this is with 10,000 and this is with 1,000 microfarad 
Okay, so with 10,000 microfarad 1 amp, we are reporting around 400 microvolts. So 1 amp, 400 microvolts. Let's move to 2 amp. Okay, we got 2 amp reporting around 600 microvolt. Okay, let's move into 3.8 amp as we did before with the other one. Okay, 3.8 amp. 3.8 and we are reporting around 1 millivolt. And let's go to the 4.5. Oh. 4.8 there we go if we can move into 5 amp okay so we are at 5 amp now and it is not performing well I think that might something to do with yeah it's, it's got something to do with our transistor the medium power transistor it's saturating it can't handle that much current to provide for the both of the 2N 3055 so I say at 4.6 amp 4.6 amp is reporting 1.2 millivolt of report it's basically tracking the LM338K it's performing exactly the same uh, the only problem is once I go to 5 amp my medium transistor which is providing power for the both of the two and yeah it's providing power for them is getting extremely hot and that's why you see that funny business that's happening i think my transistor is saturating and it's not working correctly okay that's fine and this was with 10,000 microfarad cap so we had nice smooth power going into the system so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to change that into a thousand microfarad and let's see pushing it to its max with lots of ripple see what kind of performance we get okay just bear with me a second so let's solder this on okay that's sorted on now and let's connect our scope probe connect our negative and our positive all right oh, let's go down okay so we had one amp and this is for a thousand microfarad one amp we are getting around 400 milli microvolt okay so let's go a notch to two amp let's go to two amp there we are we can't manage that at right, two amp let's see what's happening okay so we're at two amp and we are getting around 100 millivolt so it's not performing as good as the lm 338 k and let's move into 4.1 as we did with lm338k 3, 3, okay so we are 4.1 whoa not a funny business happening 4.1 amp and we got 377 millivolt of ripple okay and that's that let's put it back on again my load is extremely hot so is my past transistors are extremely hot and my medium transistor transformer stone cold okay so let's disconnect everything let's turn the power off before things blow up okay it's done let's move everything away from the shop and let's bring this up and let's have a look at what we got here okay so we got some numbers and we can see what's going on so with a thousand microfarad with the thousand microfarad capacitance for our bridge rectifier the lm338k performed much better than lm31k with our past elements as we can see 
one amp they're both kind of similar this one is performing a bit better but i think this is just background noise with two amp this is where everything is going funny and the lm338k is 28 millivolts of ripple where our lm317 with the pass transistor is 100 millivolts of ripple and with with a thousand microfarad cap at 4.1 amp 44 millivolts for 338k and around 377 for 317 with pass elements but at the end of the day when you put in that much current no one's going to use a thousand microfarad cap so this was just for me just to push a lot of ripple into the system trying to see what kind of performance we get but no one's going to use this so this this test was just not for real events because no one's going to use that so 10,000 microfarad, more like it, where everyone's going to have that kind of capacitance for for the bridge rectifiers when you stop putting that sort of current. They're kind of almost tracking each other. So 1 amp, 400 microvolt, 400 microvolt, 2 amp, 800 microvolt, 600 microvolt. I think all of this is just background noise because the way we are probing things, wires hanging around, and that kind of, you know, that kind of level is, is not really... I say it's all just one millivolt, one millivolt for all of them. That's exactly where they are at five amp. At five amp, we got 1.2 millivolt of ripple at the back at the output. Again, same goes for the LM317 with the pass transistors. At five amp, we got 1.2 millivolt of ripple. So they, with 10,000 microfarad, with very little ripple at the input, they both perform exactly the same as each other. No differences, no disadvantages for and having any either. Where with this one it's much cheaper compared to this and it's readily available and you can make it and you can tweak these numbers these transistors to perform better than what mine did because you can provide a better power transistor here to get more current out of these two where mine was hitting the saturation it was saturated and it wasn't working properly but you know you can change these things around you can add more pass transistors at the end to get even higher current where with this one is limited to 5 amp. Again, with this, you can add pass transistors to this, like, you know, swap this around, but then what was the point? You're paying all of that money for this, for its performance, for its output capabilities. But you see, yep, yeah, it's, it's uh, any day I would choose this over this because this is much more expensive. With the price of one of these, I can make double or maybe triple the current capabilities of what this performs with that kind of price. I can, you know, I can make this and have it better the only problem with this is obviously you're going to have a bit of bigger heat sink and things like that where this is just one package you know two or three package you just whack it on and that's it where this one you will need a bigger heat sink because you have to accommodate it for more components the lm317 itself doesn't need to be on a heat sink because not a lot of current goes through this the most of the current will go past through these two pass elements but still it's a good idea to just stick it on whatever heat sink that you use in here just to keep it on the wrap because if you stick this on the heatsink where this uh, pass transistor at the outputs are that will prevent any runaway event that happen because this will have the lm317 has a thermal shutdown so as soon as these get too hot and the pass transistors get very hot this will obviously get hot and then it will cut the system down so basically it will lower the voltage trying to prevent you know too much heat happening so then it will it will control your system in a in a way but yeah, it's best to have beefy, beefy heat sinks for these, you know, these transistors at the end. If it all depends on how much current you're gonna pull, but at the end of the day, they both perform exactly the same. On the load with 10,000 microfarad cap, you can even whack two, you know, two 10,000 microfarad cap and have even better performances. But one millivolt of ripple at five amp is perfect, you know, for any kind of projects. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and consider subscribing because it keeps the channel going. And until next day. Have a good day.